Hello everyone, this is G and I'm back with another video. I hope everybody is well as always. A very rare Saturday video from me and a very rare uh, daytime video. RJ is currently snoozing on my uh, bed. So I saw this tweet on the Twitter and I wanted to respond to it. Especially since it deals with brothers and sisters and age and relationships and what would you know, I happen to be an older sibling. Yes, I am the older sister to my younger brother who just turned 33 uh, this past Monday on the 15th. Life comes at you fast and it just reminds me that I'm getting old. <laughs> but anyway, uh, this tweet from Culture Crave says, Katara will reportedly be the older sibling in Netflix live action Avatar The Last Airbender series, right? Uh, Katara's age will be 16, Sokka's age will be 14, Aang will still be 12. Now, to my understanding, in the original cartoon series, Sokka was 15 and Katara, I believe, was 14. And Aang was 12, right? So, first of all, this is not something I agree with. I don't agree with these changes and I will explain why. One second. Okay. Ah. Close the door a little, try to kill out, try to redo some of the sound from the other room but anyway um yeah i don't agree with this change i find it to be incredibly arbitrary and i will get into why right but first it makes me wonder well if they're going to change the ages of the uh sibling pairing on the good guy team right uh, katara and Sokka, well are they going to change the sibling ages and therefore the sibling dynamic and sibling rivalry between the uh, bad guy siblings, I guess you could say, of Azula and um, Zuko, right? Uh, to my understanding, Zuko is 16, I think, during the events of Avatar, and Azula is uh, 14 years old, right? So, again, you know, they're flipping the ages, and uh, I actually found this article on Screen Rant, and uh, I very rarely agree with anything Screen Rant says. I don't exactly think it's the world's best source. But for once, they actually had, in my opinion, a pretty good and good take. So here's what, what part of the article said. It says here, in light uh, of the news of a new showrunner, the Illuminati, which, which is what I think was, was referenced in the tweet previously, has reported that the ages of Sokka, of, uh, sorry, of Katara and Sokka will change. In the original series, Sokka is 15 and Katara is 14. In this new series, Katara will be the older sibling at 16 years old and Sokka will be younger at 14 years old. Aang's age of 12 years old will remain the same. I find that quite interesting. Additionally, the show will be structured differently with 10 one hour long episodes as opposed to the 20 30 minute long episodes excuse me of the original's first season right then it goes on to say this change of only a few years may seem small but it will most likely change the entire dynamic of the characters relationships Sokka's sarcasm and goofiness will likely stay but his eldest son's feelings of responsibility for Katara and his family may not. Katara's responsibility and motherly nature probably will not change, but her strained relationship finding her sense of duty might. The biggest probable change, however, is the romantic relationship between Aang and Katara that took all three seasons to build. It is unlikely that the show would maintain a romantic relationship between a 16-year-old and a 12-year-old. And this is exactly the part I was deeply concerned about. So I got to give Screen Rant credit. Because this was exactly what I was concerned about when I read about this change and found that um, it's planned. Now, you really won't know until the, sh until the live action show uh, airs eventually. But apparently this is what they want to do. Right. Here's the thing about sibling relationships. Right. There is a distinct difference in the way the relationship dynamics work uh, when, I say, depending on the age of the siblings and the gender of the siblings, right? The relationship between an older sister and her younger brother is different than the relationship between an older sister and her younger sister, 
or an older brother and his younger brother or an older brother and his younger sister. It is different. That sense of responsibility, whether you feel it personally or whether uh, your parents <laughs> bestow responsibility onto you, right? The relationship that you have because of your gender, whether it's the same sex gender, right? Brother, brother, sister, sister, or whether it's um, the opposite sex, right? All of that factors into your relationship and how you relate to and react and understand each other, right? So in my opinion, as this points out, when you change that, when you make Katara the older sibling in this case, you are changing not just the, the dynamic be, between brother and sister, but you're also going to be altering their individual stories. As, as this part of the article points out, right? Part of a major part of Sokka's story. Now, I, I, I want to be clear. Given that the main characters, good, good guys and bad, are largely teenagers, all of them have in a coming of age arc, right? All of them have that element to their stories because that's literally what growing up is. It's coming of age, right? You, you, un, unless you, you sadly pass away, right? You cannot remain a teenager forever, right? You grow up and then you grow old. Right? That's the way life works. Right? So that's always going to be an element of a story involving teenagers, them going from teens to older teens to young adults. Right? You've seen this in nearly anything involving children. Right? FMA, um, Naruto, right? Boruto, right? Anything involving kids as the main cast is going to have this story of growing up. Right? And all the things that um, come with that, right? But in this case, as the article points out, right, a huge part of Sokka's individual story and character arc is him learning to grow up and be a man, and be a man of his tribe. And given that he comes from a very tribal society, right, right, the Southern Water Tribes are very traditionalist in that sense. Right, it's a his definition of being a man is going to be defending his people, defending his sister, right? As the article points out here, right, his eldest son feelings of, of, of responsibility and his family. That's a huge part of his uh, arc. And to change his age, even just by making him one year younger and making Katara, I think, what, two years younger? Right? Or, or rather, two years older, right? Um, you now change his story, right? Because now, if he's the younger sibling, right, you have to explain why he feels a responsibility toward um, uh, Katara and his family. Is it just because he's male, right? Which it could be. There's nothing wrong with that. But again, you, you would have to now rework and reestablish his motivations, right, for for why he views things the way he does. And for example, he feels deeply inadequate, right, throughout most of the story. If you change his his being the eldest sibling, you you now have to go back into his story and even if it's just slightly, readjust his reasons for feeling inadequate, right? And again, it's, it's just going to change his story. Same thing for Katara, right? Her story wasn't really about being the eldest sibling, right? Her story was, was much more uh, personal, right? She wanted to look after her, her brother and, and, and Aang and all that, right? But her story was also deeply tied uh, to her mother. And it even mentions here, you know, that she struggled to find her um, uh, sense of duty, right? So you change that dynamic and, and you, it's, it's a domino effect is basically what I'm saying. It's a domino effect, right? When you change one part, you end up having a uh, ripple effect, right? So that's all I really got to say, but I can't think of anything else, right? And then 
uh, it mentions here, and this is something I noticed too, right? Is that the ro the the romantic relationship, right? Uh, that dynamic is going to to change between Aang and Katara, right? Because now instead of a two year gap in their ages, there's a four year gap. Now, when you're dealing with adults, right? When you're dealing with adults, that's not such a big deal having a four year gap in age. But we're not dealing with adults. We're dealing with teenagers, and Aang himself technically is still a preteen, right? Despite being frozen in ice for a hundred years, or however the story goes, right? So, imagine for a moment in the modern day, you had a 16-year-old girl, right? A high schooler, a sophomore in high school, most likely, having romantic feelings and attractions, and, an, and a, a kiss, right? Remember that I think they end up kissing? I don't think we ever see it at least not until later, but if I remember correctly, when they were in the cave of two lovers, they ended up kissing, right? But just, just imagine that, a kiss, whether it's implied or whether it's shown, still, a kiss between a 16-year-old high schooler and a 12-year-old middle schooler, right? Someone who hasn't even reached 13 yet. Yeah, more than a bit disturbing, right? More than a bit disturbing, so it makes you wonder how they're going to handle that element of their relationship because that's also a huge factor in the story um, in Avatar, right? Uh, Aang and Katara falling in love, right? That is, a, again, that it's just a very different di dynamic in the way you relate to it, the way the characters will relate to it, and the way the audience will relate and feel to it. It's going to be incredibly different, right, uh, when you have a four-year age gap between two minors, right, than a two-year age gap, right? So, again, very, very questionable, let's say. Very, very, very questionable. Now, I want to be clear. I'm not against, you know, older siblings, older, or rather women, being the older sibling in a, a, um, uh, opposite sex sibling dynamic. Quite obviously, I am the older sister, right? I know what that relationship is like. In fact, I think one of the best depictions of that relationship, older sister, younger brother, was in Gargoyles, right? The relationship between Elisa and her younger brother, Eric, right? Not, not, not Eric. Badging that. Derek. Derek Mazza. <laughs> For those who don't know or, or aren't too familiar with the lore of, of uh, Gargoyles. Elisa is the oldest sibling in her family. There's three Maza kids. Elisa, her brother Derek, and then her sister Beth, who doesn't make too many appearances in the series. Sorry, Beth. Right, but the main sibling relationship that you see in Gargoyles, right, uh, at least for the humans, right, is um, Elisa and her brother, right? There, 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 there's actually... An episode um, in season one, I think it is, right? Her brother's keeper, right? So, so it, it, it focuses on, right, the relationship between... Um, I, I, in fact, I think this and the next slide are from that episode, right? But it focuses on the relationship between Elisa and her brother, right? Her being the older sister and him being the younger sibling. And guess what? It ends up like this. As an, oh, as an older sister to a younger brother, yeah, this is what it is. <laughs> it's a lot of arguing, right? Elisa's a very bossy um, uh, older sibling, and I totally get it because I'm the same way, especially when my brother was uh, much younger, right? I'm older, and, 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 and you know, my, my mantra as a kid was always, you know, I was born first for a reason, right? I'm bigger, I'm stronger, I'm smarter, therefore I am better, and you listen to me. <laughs> and of course, my brother re retaliated by getting me in trouble in every way he could, right? But Gargoyles, in my opinion, um, touched upon the, the older sister, younger brother, especially when they're adults. And I can say this now, looking back at the series as an adult very well, right? Whether it's a young man tired of the women in his life trying to tell him what to do, or whether it's an older sister, you know, trying to guide her, her uh, brother 
uh, in the way that she feels is right, but it's unintentionally, you know, sort of trying to stifle his uh, freedom, right? And the thing about Gargoyles is that a huge theme of the show was family, right? We see it with Elisa's family, we see it with the Gargoyles, we see it with uh, Goliath and his conflict with his um, brother Coldstone, right? There's even, there's, there's even an episode, it might be her brother's keeper, where Goliath kind of gets pissed off at Elisa, and, he, and, he's, and he's like, at least you have family to fight with, <laughs> right? Because um, his uh, brother, you know, was pretty much lost to him, right, due to circumstances in the story, right? He doesn't really get um, Coldstone back, right? But again, this sibling dynamic, right, it is just very distinct and very different. And if you flip the ages, if Derek is older and Elisa is younger, you flip that entire di dynamic and it's not the same anymore. Another work that I think does incredibly well with um, sibling relationships is Full Metal Alchemist, right? Which is, again, a show that, that focuses a lot on family, right? The main sibling duo in this case is um, Ed and Al, right? Ed being the young, the older, sorry, Ed being the older sibling, Al being the uh, younger one. But what I, what I wish these creatives, supposedly creatives, would understand is that when they are adapting uh, an existing work, you should stick to it, in my opinion, as much as possible. There's a reason why, right, characters look a certain way, act a certain way, are a certain age, so on and so on and so forth. It's not there just for the sake of, right? There is a reason, there, there, there is a, th a thematic reason, there is a storyline reason. For example, in, F in uh, FMA, why Ed is the older sibling and Al is the younger sibling, right? There's a reason why Ed is a hothead and Al is more even keeled and even tempered. There are thematic reasons to this. And again, Ed being the older sibling, in, and in this case, an in, in older uh, man, right, tasked with looking after his younger brother, right, there is that sense of responsibility, right, especially in, in uh, Ed's case because he feels incredibly guilty because he feels like he dragged Al um, into this, that that it's his fault that Al is in the state he's in, not having a body for the majority of the story. In fact, that's part of the story arc, right? Ed having to wrestle with that guilt and Al having to assert to Ed that no, Al was just as willing and it, it was just, a, a, just as much of a participant in the human tran transmutation that uh, scarred them as Ed was, right? He's not Ed's victim. He's he's basically Ed's accomplice, right? And of course, there are many other things that play into, excuse me, there's many other things that play into their sibling um, dynamic, right? And part of that actually is Winry also too, how they relate to her, right? Especially in relation to each other. There's this funny thing about how when they were kids, they, they would fight over who, who, uh, who would get to uh, to uh, marry Winry, right? Which is a, which is a bit of a funny thing, but still, again, that also plays into their sibling um, dynamic. All of this is intentional, and in my opinion, when you when you adapt something and you and you change things arbitrarily, I and I want to be clear, I understand. I understand that due to circumstances, budget, whatever it is, that at times you may have to alter things a bit when adapting, uh, say, in, in this case, an animated work to live action, right? Understandably, there are just certain concessions you have to make. But age isn't one of them. There is no, in, in my personal opinion, and from what I have read about this thus far, there is no reason... There is no storyline reason, there is, there is no actor, actress reason or anything else that justifies changing the age between Katara and Sokka. Just none. It's not there. It is not an element of the story that needed to, to change. And in my personal opinion, 
this element of the story was changed because of the false faux feminism that must how I think it's it's how uh, Lindsay Ellis terms it like the whole girl boss thing. In fact, she did a video uh, video criticizing Disney. I think last year or the year prior, where she brought that up, how they kept you know trying to how they in these um, reboots I should say in these reboots Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, and, and, and all that, how they kept, you know, trying to make their female lead to also serve as a love interest in these films, right? Make them more feminist than in thou by making them girl boss characters. For example, with, um, what's her face? Uh, Jasmine, right? Her becoming, I think, the Sultan or the Sultana or however it's mentioned at the end of Aladdin, right? It was a pointless change, right? to for disney to to uh, virtue signal and say hey women are powerful as if people didn't already know right making jasmine the sultana did nothing for her story it didn't help the the viewers understand her her character then or now any better it was put in to fought for false virtue we'll say and I think it's the same thing here, more or less, right? Making Katara the older sibling, giving her the responsibility that comes with being an older sibling, right? It puts her in a position of power, right? Now both over uh, Sokka, right? And over Aang, at least in age. At least in age, right? Now, further gap. It gives her, especially at, at, as a teenager, right, a greater sense of power and responsibility. Which, in my, again, in, in, in my opinion, for all reasons stated over the past 20 minutes, uh, I don't agree with. It is pointless, it is arbitrary, it is false virtue, and I don't agree with it. Too many things have to be changed and too many things have to be sacrificed, you know, for these... Uh, uh, I guess you could say supposedly minor changes. And then again, like with, with other things, it makes you wonder, well, what else is going to be changed? If they feel that the ages must be changed for some reason, right? If they feel the, the, the age of the characters must be changed, but, but the main hero of the story can't even turn 13, right? If they feel this has to be changed, then what else are they going to change? Again, are they going to change Zuko and Azula? Are they going to change other characters? I don't know. Right? Who knows? I guess we'll find out um, as this goes on. Right? But another thing, and I'll try to wrap it up with this, which I find very interesting that the Screen Rant article mentions, right? It says here, uh, I'm trying to find it. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Ah, here it goes. It says here, that um, it was recently reported that the show had found a new showrunner, Albert Kim, after the creators of the original, Brian Con Conietzo, I don't know how you say it, and Michael Dante Di Martino, left the project over creative differences. Right, so. Here we are with a new director who is, even if it's in a small way, showing a level of disrespect, in my opinion, uh, for the work of the originals. Now that the originals have, the original creators have left the the series for creative differences. So I don't know. The best bet I can put it is this: I don't want a gargoyle show without Greg Weissman at the helm. And I personally would not want a uh, Avatar The Last Airbender show animated or live action, but especially live action given the bad taste that is still in people's mouths over that film, the live action movie that uh, M. Night Shyamalan did, I think like in 09 or whatever it was, right? Given that that legacy still exists, yeah, I would not be interested in a show that doesn't have the original show runners working on it especially if they walked away uh, because of creative differences it's just 
it just gives me pause, is basically what I'm saying. But anyhow, uh, that's the video. Please let me know what you think, and I will see you all in the next one. Have a good day or night, whatever you are, wherever you are. Uh, try to enjoy the weekend if you can. See you around. Bye.